All right, does that work? <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Let's post this. Live, live. Hey, what's up, Moon Mix? Can you guys hear me okay? I was having some stream key issues. <laughs> okay, here we go. Don't you hate that stream stream key problems? How you guys doing? Hey, happy Monday. Welcome, welcome. Sounds good? Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. How you guys doing today? Monday? Let's start out the week with some sculpting, shall we? That'll be cool. I'm going to hide this hide this gun um, I thought I'd do some uh, figure out some last minute well not last minute some final details on this guy I've been working on him this morning I added some things what's up Craig over on YouTube what's up me hey James how you doing man yay what's up video nomad I'm live I am live have we seen any of my work at E3? Uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> um, I'm so I'm currently working on uh, I'm doing some contract work for Blizzard. What in the world is going on here? Sorry, this just caught my eye. I'm like, what is going on? Okay, I don't know what's happening. It looks like there's some collision, something going on. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Joner? Good, good. Good, James. That's awesome. Thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, hey, what's up, Sean? Haven't seen you for a while. We've got some, uh, some things going on with these pauldrons, but I'm going to ignore them for now. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. What did I do? I've just been adding some gradients to him, and... Um, I added this kind of this hat detail. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, hey, what's up over on Facebook? How, how you guys doing? Hello from Sweden. How's it going? What's up, Eric? Thanks for stopping by. What's up, Will May? You're posing a dragon. Right on. <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, I wanted to put this little star on his hat. Let's, let's start by doing that, eh? Thanks, Moon Mix. You're awesome. Okay. Let's get to it, shall we? I'm going to start with a cylinder. Ooh. Let's reset this. Let's try that again. There. Headlight. <laughs> My, the dinosaur in this file kind of looks like a dragon. I love dragons. They're fun. I'm a D&D &D nerd. You know, I'm one of those guys. Oh, sure. Side effects. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I do. So you guys, uh, I do some free training if you guys sign up for my, um, my brushes and stuff. So send you a couple a few videos. I'm gonna turn live boolean off for now. Looks like his face is low res. There we go. And I want to. Uh, I'm gonna solo this hat for a minute. Let's um. Let's split this based on the masking. There we go. Oh, right on. The dragons of Pern. That's great. Great series. From Italy. Hey, over on Facebook, Italy. Crazy. What time is it in Italy right now? Okay, I'm going to uncrease this. Oh, 
I don't know why it's also increasing the back, but it is. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Oh well. Hey, what's up, Jace? How you doing, man? Insert. Hey, what's up, Harry? How you doing? From Hungary. Um, LA over on Facebook uh, asks, what's my process like? My process, that is a huge question, my friend. Um, I, I typically block out my characters with primitive objects and then I, uh, I work my way through and make all the costuming and all that kind of stuff. My, it's, a, it's a very, very long process to answer in a short amount of time. <laughs> but welcome to the stream. been traveling. Yes, this is my new time. I'm glad you could make it. So I've decided to stream on Mondays. It's actually noon my time, so lunchtime right now. Um, but it's 11 a.m. in California, and I, I think it's, what, 2 o'clock in uh, New York time? Let's see. Something like that. I'm going to pop open... Uh, Hey, Roit, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for stopping by. 8 p.m. in Holland. See, that's fantastic that you guys get to uh, watch. That's exactly why I changed my time, because I, I used to... Yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern. Thanks. I used to stream uh, on Tuesday nights at 7 my time, so... Brazil. Hey, what's up, Tom? Okay. So I decided to change up the time so more people could watch. What time is it here? So it's noon. It's uh, uh, 12 o'clock a.m. right now. Lunchtime. <laughs> uh, let's see. Could you show us how to make teeth? Sure. Yeah, I could do that. I don't believe he has teeth right now. It's been It's been a while since I've worked on him, so I can't recall, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll get some teeth in him. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make this this star on the front. It's, I mean, it's a very, fairly simple piece of geometry. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Whoop. It's just kind of this diamond. And uh, I have an idea for it. And diamonds are just essentially cubes turned on their sides, so... Let's just do uh, a cube split. Yep, it's high noon. <laughs> exactly. That's what time it is. So uh, if, if you guys grab my insert primitive mesh brush, my insert multi-mesh brush that is primitives, right here I have these two cubes and this cube split is essentially just a cube that's been split on all sides and it's been creased. Yeah, right, making a McCree skin. <laughs> and this original artwork is done by uh, Johannes Helgeson. I, I uh, suggest you guys check him out, his art station. Hey, hey Moon Mix, since you're doing, uh, since you're doing links would you mind slapping down a johannes art station link if you have it if you could that would be rad okay so i'm thinking about well hmm i'm gonna be doing this uh yeah so i i do some i'm i'm i do some contract work for blizzard i play overwatch quite a bit so not not recently because I've been doing some contract work, but when I'm not doing contract work or working on my course, sometimes I like to play Overwatch. It's a great game. So I'm going to oh I don't want to hide that. 
Nice. Thank you, Moon Mix. Thank you, Video Nomad. There you go. Check out Johannes Helgeson. He's fantastic. Okay, so I I don't... I want to split this. Let's split it. I'm going to have uh, one bajillion subtools when I'm done with this. Okay. So, essentially, this is what's going through my mind. All right. I have this diamond now. It's a it's a cube turned on its side, which is essentially a diamond. But I, the the polys are going the wrong direction. See, I want them to go this direction. So I'm actually thinking about drawing this by hand because I could either I could cut this so they are going in the proper direction, or I could just draw it. I think I'm just going to draw it. So I'm going to delete this. Um, grab the star again. Sometimes they always don't work out. I love how his eyes are just kind of peeking up over the bottom. He's like, how you doing? <laughs> Staring me down. All right. So let's, uh, let's draw on the surface of this guy. Just grab your Z remesher brush, like so. And I'm gonna draw. So, Here's, here's a tip for you guys. Um, some of my students were struggling with this. Uh, when you go to use this um, Z Remesher brush, when, when you draw a line, it makes these black and orange ticks, okay? And when you're drawing across the lines, it will only make a green circle. See this little green dot? That is essentially telling you where the lines are crossing. And it will only make one of those green circles on the tick marks. So if you're having a hard time drawing these lines and making them cross, just make your brush smaller. Because if you have a big brush like this, see the ticks are farther apart. And did you notice how, um, sorry, there you go. See how it actually took the connection point between this orange line and this black line and pushed it over to make the tick match up with this orange and black line going vertical see that that so if you're if your lines are getting kind of messed up and you're getting a, a bunch of lines kind of uh in a in a big mess like a spaghetti mess just uh shrink down your brush size so let's i'm just going to do that again i'm going to clear these clear these off I'm sorry go away there we go and then um draw this again i don't have symmetry turned on i need to turn on symmetry this works with symmetry there we go see it, it still pops it up but that's okay um yeah it's just uh it's it's just kind of something you need to watch out for mccree's your main right on <laughs> so hey la this is not my character this is um this character is designed by Johannes Helgeson. He is he is originally a Swedish fellow, I believe. Okay, why isn't this making? Yes, I am using alt to get rid of the lines. But it's having a hard time. Let me clean this up. See, it's not Typically, you can clean it up by hand. I'm actually going to turn symmetry off because it's causing some grief right here. So let me try this again. So it doesn't look like it's wanting to um, connect the lines and make a square. I'm going to start over again. <laughs> Sometimes this just doesn't have... I don't get good results. I'm actually going to try and make some triangles over here. Why isn't it making triangles? Is it? Okay. I don't know why it's not doing what I want it to do. It's having a hard time today. <laughs> what's up, Ronnie? How you doing? Hey, what's up, Malicus? Hey, James, if you're still watching me. Yes, I'm going to the ZBrush Summit. <laughs> oh thanks man thanks sorry private conversation with james uh yeah thanks man caffeinated in maya huh 
Yes, it is quite buggy, so I'm going to try. Oh my goodness, what am I going to try? Um, hmm. What do I want to do with this? Since my topology brush is not working. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to duplicate some. This is another thing. Um, I, I have this dynamically subdivided. See how I have dynamic turned on? Sometimes when you try and draw on the top of an extremely low resolution mesh, the uh, Z remesh brush does not like it. So I'm going to duplicate this and actually add real subdivision levels. Okay, so I'm going to hit apply and then uh, divide it up another time. So it has four subdivision levels and then I'm going to delete the lower. So now I'm going to try that. Side effects, you, I, I could, but like I said, it's like, well, you know what, let me, let me see. Let me see what else we got here. Because um, I think I have, maybe, uh, maybe I could use, like a four-sided cone would work. Let's try a four-sided cone. Okay, my ZBrush is acting really strange right now. Because that should have replaced. Yeah, see, it should have replaced this and showed a cone. I don't know why it's acting up on me right now. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, it doesn't have to have. It doesn't have to be on one of these. You just have to have your gizmo there and reset. And then see this, if you, if you click one of these primitives under here, it should replace your current geometry with a primitive. But for some reason, it doesn't like it. I don't have Live Boolean on. I don't have Sculptress Pro on. <laughs> We're just going to stare at the cylinder all day. What do you guys think? Awesome. Okay. Jeez, what is going on? You guys get to watch me struggle, apparently. All right, you know what? I'm just going to Armstrong this. Uh, I don't think so. Nothing hidden. I'm going to do run a delete hidden. Yeah, see, it says it needs to be required. Project is on. No, project is not on. Um, you can do this without projection to being turned on. There's a cylinder. Okay, the cylinder worked. Why didn't the cone work? There's the cone. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a cone. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wonder if it's because symmetry was on. Maybe? I don't know. Yay. All right, let's turn this down. We're going to subdivide this down to four. Hey, look at that. Bam. Accept that. Jeez, you think... You think it'd be harder. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey Craig, uh, that's a that's a gigantic question. Um, it depends on specifically what you're asking. There are, yeah, anatomy is a super duper deep subject that I could go on for days with. Okay, there you go, easy. I think I might add some more, some more detail to this and just so it's not so, so plain, but for now that's pretty good. I can live with that. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a ton of different ways you can do, <laughs> you can make a, a pyramid, you know, like this star. Um, I do want to bring in the sides of it, though. But it's, now that it's triangles, I don't know if it'll actually let me cut through it. Let's see if it will. No. Um, okay, I, pro I can probably do this. And then, um, like, weld the points on the inside. But essentially what I want to do with this 
is bring these points in like this. Okay. So Craig, you're talking about sculpting the mouth, like some tips on sculpting the mouth. Um, let's see. That'll work. Yeah, I like that. Sure. That on. Okay. And I could probably scree the, uh, crease the these lines so when I subdivide it, it will not collapse like this. Let's crease those bad boys. Okay, boom, boom. There we go. <laughs> Honestly, anatomy is the most difficult thing to do, especially female anatomy. Um, yeah, it gets, it can be difficult. Okay, now that we have that, let's merge these down together. So they're together. Then I can make them, make it smaller. Let's reset this and bring it down. Um, he does have a kind of a, a hat belt. I don't know what you call that hat band around there. I, I did push this in to crease it, which I probably shouldn't have. I should probably build an actual hat band with some, uh, you know, these, these little loops, hat loops to hold it into place. Um, I'll probably build that out here in a minute. So, uh, Craig, to answer your question, um, I I have built several mouths in the past, but yeah, let me let me run you through a really quick trick. Excuse me, and this is actually a, a new lesson that I'm working on with my students. If I ever get it done, um, let's uh, let's go over to this this sphere, and I'll show you really fast. Okay, so I'm going to take this sphere. It's just a generic poly sphere, so there's no poles on the top or the bottom. It's just a sphere. So if you if you think of this as your head, you know your your guy's head. Um, I'll show you uh, ways that people usually do it, and the way I used to do it, and I I no longer do it this way. So I have this um, I have this sphere, and I'm just going to hit D for dynamic subdivisions, and then. Most people will come in here with like say a pinch brush or the detail brush and they'll just come along here and you know cut in kind of uh, a line to uh, signify that crease in the mouth and then do the hold down alt so it's actually pulling it out and then going you know like this. This is really low resolution by the way and then doing it the same on the bottom and then you know keep kind of pushing it and maybe maybe do uh, dynamic uh or not dynamic dynamesh like if you would take this mesh and dy dynamesh it so it has more topology here let me let me back this up back this train up a little bit and i'm going to duplicate this because i want to show you what i used to do subdivide this a couple more times and then do a dynamesh okay and just quickly dynamesh this sphere now it's dynameshed. Then let's do it again. So we take this pinch brush, kind of just cut in a line for the for the mouth. See how it has more more topology now. And then do the reverse on the top to make a lip. Do the reverse on the bottom to make a the bottom lip. Notice I'm not going all the way to the edge too, because pinch does not play well with others. Meaning when you get pinch close to something that you've already sculpted, it'll actually pull the geometry in like a black hole. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to show you an example. If I go to this edge of this, see how it's like messing up the other two lines that I made. So I typically don't take it all the way down. I, I will instead make my brush smaller and then kind of get closer. And this is still lower res geometry, so you can just kind of smooth it out. Anyway, there's kind of a um, kind of a base mouth, and you can you can pull them out. 
pull out the lips a bit to give it kind of that you know so it's not sitting right flat on the surface but I do like to keep my lips flat most of the time um, but this is the new way that I do it okay so there that's the old way and notice there's not a mouth cavity so I would typically save the mouth cavity until later but the problem is the um, the, the crease in the middle of the mouth isn't nice and dark and the darkest part of your mouth is actually in the corners of your mouth where it's like gathering the most ambient occlusion and shadows, okay? So um, let's, I'll show you how I do it now. Let's hide this other one. Okay, um, so what I, what I typically do now is I will either take like the Z modeler and I'll do, I'll do it this way. Let's uh, do poly group, uh, single poly, and I'm just gonna create just kind of uh, where my mouth is going to be. And with doing it this way, it's gonna look ugly before it looks good. Then I will go and do a, an extrude, poly group all, and push this in like this. So this is kind of essentially creating that mouth bag, right? Uh, mouth bag, mouth cavity, whatever you wanna call it. Then I'll push that in and you can mask it and then scale it up really big, not that big. Just quite, you know, fairly big inside there. Push it back just to create some more space. And it doesn't have to look pretty inside there. What we're looking for is a, a change of direction. So we're looking for, I think it's uh, 45 degrees or greater because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Z remesh it. And since this is square, I'm going to take the move brush and kind of help it out a little bit on the corners of the mouth right here. Whoop. This one. And just kind of make more of a round mouth corners. Like this. Okay. Now what I can do is I'll Z remesh that. So, and I keep forgetting about it, but... Uh, there's a Z remesh function now underneath your gizmo. So if you hit the turn the gizmo on like this and you go to your gear, you can see it says Z remesh by Z remesher. So if you hit that, then this box comes up and you have a little white cone that is target polygon counts, which is super cool. And this one is your symmetry. So I want to pull this one out because I want sy symmetry across the X axis. So I'll pull that one out and then I'll pull this one to about, let's try 400-ish and let go. And then it Z remeshes it like this. And it still didn't give me what I want. So I'm gonna go back. Um, here, let me show you why it didn't give me what I want. I'm looking for a continuous edge loop around the, the corners of the mouth. See how it's actually going to like a diamond shape? I don't want it to be a diamond shape. And the reason it did that is because my mesh is still too low, low of resolution. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go back out of this, back to Gizmo 3D. And I'm going to actually subdivide it once like this and then get rid of that subdivision level. So go to subdivision, get rid of it. Delete the lower is what I'm doing. I can smooth this out a little bit with symmetry turned on. Okay. Now I'm going to do it again, okay? I'm going to um, go to my uh, gear and do a Z remesh by Z remesher, okay? And remember, it doesn't work with this regular activate symmetry up here. It only works with the cone if you want symmetry. So make sure you pull on that, on that cone, make sure it's out so it's, uh, so it's symmetrical. Okay, and now grab this. Target polygon counts, about 500. Let's try it again, and you'll get a much better result. There we go, that's what we want right there. Okay, now, now you can click on this gear again and say accept. Now we have this Z remeshed mesh with a loop around the mouth. And you, I will do this in conjunction with around the eyes, around the nose. If you watch my past streams, you'll see me do it. Um, it's kind of my new uh, workflow, one that I kind of developed recently. 
And uh, I like it because I can keep my resolution very, very low. And I can turn on dynamic subdivision. So I just hit D. So now it's it looks smooth, even though it's very low resolution. And that's kind of the trick. That's the key to keeping your, uh, your mesh very, very clean and smooth. The second you add more geometry, then there's a higher possibility of adding more warbles and just loops and lumps and stuff across the surface. Okay, so now I have this, this, this uh, mouth cavity that I can start with. And what I can do is I can hit move and then turn on topological. And then I'm gonna turn my range down to three. So range is just the fall off, the distance that this topological is going to work. And topological just means if I grab the bottom lip, it's not going to affect the top lip, okay? That's just kind of the fall off. Okay, so basically all I do is I, is I nudge the upper lip down and then I nudge the lower lip up until they meet in the middle. And this is gonna look like a Muppet for a minute. And then you can only get it so far in the corners because of your fall off. You can make your brushes smaller. Uh, let's see. Looks like we're not symmetrical perfectly. So see how I'm nudging this side and it doesn't match. And that's really easy to fix. All you need to do is go uh, mirror and weld. Looks like my sphere got off symmetry somehow or turned or something, but it doesn't matter. I just hit mirror and weld and we're good to go. Okay. So now I can go and use inflate and I'll just come in here and I'll just gradually inflate these together. See that? And it's like a, it's like a Muppet mouth all of a sudden. And now what I do is I pull these, uh, the corners of the mouth. Here, let me turn off this cowboy. I can turn the corners of the mouth and I pull them back to, you know, cause your, your mouth wraps around your teeth, right? It doesn't, it doesn't perfectly match the arc of your of your entire skull it has a different arc that's tighter than your than your entire skull and that's kind of a that's a uh, kind of a rookie mistake that a lot of new sculptors do is they they make the mouth the same arc as the outside of like say your skull's forehead or something like that it's not that big it's smaller am i in perspective I don't think so, <laughs> but you're right. That happens when you're in perspective. That's why I don't work in perspective most of the time. Okay, and now I look looks like he's got his lower lip out. Let's push it in and pull out the upper lip like this. And now that I have, I, I kind of have this mouth, right? Um, hey, what's up, Pedro? What I can do is, you know, do what I showed you the first time with this other sphere. So this sphere is like, you know, using the Dynamash and using Pinch. But now I have this much better start to a mouth. And now I can come in here and do like a, an inverse pinch and start to form that upper lip. See that? And then I can come back and, and do the same thing to the bottom lip. And again, I don't go all the way to the corners of the mouth. just kind of you know and I, I just kind of start soon and then and then pull it in okay and the corners of the mouth they usually line up with the inside of the pupils that's that's a typical person's mouth how wide it is it doesn't go like clear out it doesn't go narrow some I mean there's variations but that's kind of your measurement is the inside of that pupil so if there were eyes up here you'd take it Kind of that wide if that if that makes sense okay so then you can just come and smooth this out and you know just do whatever you can shape it now you'll notice that automatically like what i was talking about before automatically the corners of the mouth are now darkest and that it's, it's just, it just happens because that is how I built it and it just kind of works that way. So you can make it smile or frown or whatever. 
So, uh, and then you can do some tuning, like you can grab this cloth and just kind of push it in underneath this lip to, to create that, that kind of swoop that happens. Um, there are some, uh, like you could use this fill brush and fill in the muscles. There's some here. Let me, let me show you by drawing on this <laughs> with color. There are some muscles that kind of go right here. And then there's a muscle that comes from the nose and it goes around this way. And then of course the two little ones that are underneath your nose right there. Um, and then your chin down here. That's kind of uh, some, if you're going more realistic, that's some of the, the stuff you can do. Hey, now he's orange. Yay. So can you now open this mouth slightly? Absolutely. So now that you've shaped it, let's make it, <laughs> let's make it more of a skin color ish. Maybe let's go darker. Okay. So now that, yeah, war paint, right? <laughs> now that you have this mouth, you can see if I turn off dynamic, it's super low. This is still really low resolution and the loops go around the mouth. The only reason I have the loops there is just to kind of support the sculpting that I'm going to do. The the pinching and the, you know, what I'm going to do with the, with the mouth itself. And I can come in here and actually smooth it out a little bit if I wanted to. Um, turn dynamic back on. And this is by no means a game resolution mesh. It's not meant to, to take out of here and use in any other way. This is just to help you build a mouth and build lips. And this would be combined with the rest of the head. And I also do this with the eye sockets and stuff like that. It's just, it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun technique that I've been using lately. And sometimes I'll pull the um, corners of the mouth on underneath inwards. So the, the bottom lip finishes sooner than the top lip and the top lip kind of overlaps and goes down across the uh, bottom lip. Did I say that right? Okay. And then you can also build up like with the clay buildup or something like that, like that muscle I was talking about, you can build it up over the top of the lip. This is too low resolution to do it, but anyway, you can do it like that. So now, uh, if, if you go back to this move and you have topological turned on and you have range set to about three, yes, then you can go back and you can like slightly open this mouth, whatever you want to do, you know, because it's like, it's there. Just just be careful you're not messing up the the geometry. You know what I mean? Messing up what you did. So anyway, <laughs> there's the tangent. Today's tangent, making a mouth. There you go. I hope that helps you guys out. <laughs> All right. Should we get back to the cowboy? All right. Um, let's see. So Florian over on Facebook... I don't think I understand the mouth arc part. So which, I, I guess I don't understand what you're asking me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pedro, do you go more detailed in the lip sometimes and do the upper lip fold in the corner? Yeah, I. it depends on how, how detailed I get, how, you know, how realistic I'm getting. Um, you know, that's just getting your basic shape and then if you want to go more detailed you leave the details till the very end but sometimes I'll go in there and I'll do the little cuts and I'll do that little dimple that's kind of on the it's hard to explain but it's right above the edge of the bottom lip there's it kind of goes in and then comes back out and there's um there's different I, I wasn't getting into a kind of the shape you know like that the the three bean method as far as like how the lips are shaped because after you get that initial basic layout, you can go in and you can uh, just keep sculpting and make it more and more, uh, you know, put, putting more and more anatomy in there, essentially. So this is for like stylized lips that are super clean and almost uh, almost anime or almost like just the slit. It's just like just a little bit of anatomy past that single slit. And that's why I didn't go in and put the muscles in there, you know, and all that other stuff. So it's just for stylized, like s extremely simply, uh, uniform, clean. Yeah, that. <laughs> Thanks for the question though. So topological brush is under brush auto masking at the bottom. Oh, thanks. Did somebody ask about that? 
Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, let me show you. So this is my custom user interface. So I, I use topological all the time right here. And essentially what that does, and the reason I brought the button out is because most people use a brush called move topological. Okay, that's in your brushes. If you hit B and you hit M, you'll see, uh, where is it? Move elastic, move topological. It's right here. So uh, this brush is in most people's arsenal. It's, it's typically one that's used often. And instead of using that brush, I actually pulled the topological button out of the brush menu and stuck it out on my user interface because what that does, that turns any brush into a topological brush, including your smooth brush if you want it to be. So say you were doing a, some kind of a pinch and you didn't want your pinch to roll over onto the next piece of geometry or the next object in the same subtool, you can just turn on topological and it won't affect it. So it'll just affect the first object that you start sculpting on. That's why I pulled it out. And I also pulled out this range to uh, be able to tweak that. And I'll show you where it's at. So if you go to, uh, if you go to brush and you go to auto masking, it's right there, topological, and there's the range right there. So when you're making a custom user interface, just go ahead and pull that out and stick it on your user interface. And um, the, uh, the, Sorry, Hannibal, I'm, I'm gonna get to you one second. <laughs> uh, if you want my user interface, it's over on uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Mo Moonmix has been posting over on Twitch. Uh, so if you wanna check it out, it's just 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Just sign up for my newsletter and you'll get my user interface and my brushes and my ruler file and all that for free. So uh, anyway, this all this stuff and this layout and these settings, they all come with that download. So. Okay, uh, Hannibal, you say, is the move topolo topology brush the way to open a mouth and a closed mouth? So, like I said, I have move selected and I turn topological on. Then I set my range to three. That's the key, setting your range low. So if it's still at like, and I don't know what the base uh, move, topolo move topological brush, I don't know what that is set at. Um, that's another reason I like to have this topological button and the range pulled out here because then I can control it um, And I set it to three that way the fall off of that uh, Topological stuff is turned way down. So I don't accidentally affect the top lip or say if I'm working on one finger I don't accidentally mess with the other finger if that makes sense. So Yep, that's just so that's your settings range three <laughs> on on topological so don't so I guess the moral of the story, don't use topological or don't use move topological, use the topological mask button. Okay. And one more thing, this, uh, see this mask by polygroups. This is also another way to do something similar, but you have to have polygroups enabled and you have to kind of know where you're headed or know where you're going in order to, uh, you know, use it properly. Um, there's, and you can also set this by a percentage. So you can set it up to 100% or zero. And the difference is, um, here, let me let me find something that has, uh, okay, here we go. So I will just show you how this works. So I have a whole bunch of polygroups right here. I'm gonna turn off topological on my move and I'm gonna crank mass by polygroups up, like by 100. So now when I start to grab a polygroup with this, the first one I grab is gonna move. So it's going, it's only going to affect the, the yellow. Okay. Or I can grab this green and since the other one's green across that bridge, across the way, it's going to move both because they're both in the same poly group. Okay. But if I turn this down to zero and I turn topological on, and I'm not going to change my brush size. If I grab this and I move it, see how it's just moving this piece and it's not really affecting the, the piece up, up above. It is slightly. If I do large movements, can you see it move? Just barely, it's just barely moving. And that's what that range is. So I think the move, let's let's go over to uh, the move topology brush and we're gonna check it out. And I'm gonna turn off topological. So this is the generic uh, move topological brush. See how much it moves? And I can't control it. So it's it's not really working the way I want it to work, right? It's not really giving me a fall off. So it's better to use move 
then this topological button, and then turn your range down to three. Then it'll, it'll do what you want. Then you can move your lower lip without affecting your upper lip, if that makes sense. <laughs> so often I try to create a poly group and miss on say the default female head and ZBrush. So I, Hannibal, I'm not understanding what you're trying to say. You often miss? And so this topological also does not work with polygroups. It, does, it doesn't care about polygroups. It only cares about the geometry, how far away the geometry is, if that makes sense. Okay. So maybe uh, you can't separate the upper and lower lip with, with oh, with, uh, here, I'll show you. I'll show you, let's see. Yeah, that's that's hard to do because, you know, like on this guy, his, um, like if you're trying to mask this off, his his lower mouth, these these polygroups are left over from when I actually pushed them them in with the Z modeler. But what you can do with this, see it's it's gonna be hard because yeah, you're gonna miss. You're gonna like it's it's uh it's that's not the best way to do it. You can do it when his mouth is open and you can try and grab those poly polygons and make a polygroup out of it. But if you're wanting say if I'm wanting to open this mouth, I don't need polygroups to do it. All I have to do is hit move, topological, range three, and now I can come in here and open his mouth and make it all a weird shape <laughs> like that. But does, it, does that make sense? And now that I have it open, even though it looks like not very good, now I can come in here with uh, my select lasso and kind of go like this with the mask. Let me do it again and go back here like this. Now, see it, it uh, it's kind of splitting that mouth in half like this. And if I want that in a poly group, I just have to hit control W and it's hard to see. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't do it, but it put this in its own poly group. So let me do it again. There we go. And yeah, it's missing some of the pieces and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird. So the the mouth method, you guys, my my students that are here watching that are um, that are in my course, this the method that I just showed you earlier in this stream. That's the lesson that I'm working on right now. So hopefully um, my my current contract is is almost done, and then I'm gonna hop right on that lesson and get it finished. I know it's been a long time. Thanks for your patience, but it's coming. <laughs> so there you go. If I use layers, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I stay away from layers as much as I possibly can. I don't use layers if I can help it because layer, yeah, la that's kind of another, a whole other, other thing. Similar issues with two sides of the shirt to fit on each other. Yeah, that's kind of a different thing. Uh, you can use back face mask if you have a, if you have a, you know, something like this, like this coat with some thickness, and um, you're trying to get it to, you know, you're trying to work the, the, the front surface and it's messing up the back, what I'll usually do is I'll try and keep it a single-sided surface for as long as possible before I add thickness to it. That Because, because of that reason. Because uh, when you're editing a, a, a double-sided surface that has thickness, it's really, really hard if you're making large edits to get them both to, to come to be, uh, let's see, it's, it's hard to get them both to come along for the ride. So it's easier to just delete the backside. Um, or you can use this back face mask. That's what this is right here. This back face mask. If you turn that on, you can affect the front of something and not the back of, of whatever you're grabbing. So if that makes sense, um, let's see. Da da da. Sorry, Hannibal, I'm still trying to figure out what you're asking me. Um, could you create the polygroup and then return it being closed and then have the polygroup? Yes, you can. Absolutely. So polygroups are just temporary selection 
things. They just allow you to do selections. Um, and then you can reassign polygroups all the time. It's not like you're stuck with the polygroup selection. They're just helpers. If you think about them as helpers, they just help you select things. I was just going to show you another thing that I just remembered, another way to do stuff. Here, I'm going to show you. Okay, and this is what I should have shown you in the first place. I didn't even think about it. So this only works if you don't if you do not have subdivision levels if you're working in dynamic which i am still this guy looks like he has subdivision levels but it's not this is just if i turn it off it's just very low this is this is how low his face is okay and um if you use this select lasso right here and you hold down Control plus shift over a line like this you can click it and it will hide that loop like that and look like a, a cyborg <laughs> then you can continue so it'll go until you you hit a pole and since there are poles in the corners of his mouth it's going to stop right there and it also there's a pole right here so it stopped right there so to continue this into the mouth we're going to get kind of close and go to the next one and sometimes this, you don't have a good geometry so it doesn't always work but you can get in here and let's try this one. Okay. And then you can look inside. Okay, that go that went through there. Then we can go uh, and hide this one. Okay. And that, that's going around the, the head like this. Let's invert it. And this is kind of what we have. We have these loops right now, right? So, and I don't want this one that's going up and across the forehead. So I'm going to hide that and make it part of the group that I hid before okay so now I just have this and that's what I want so then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to use this auto groups okay if I click auto groups and you'll see it got rid of my poly groups inside the ear that I had before because I'm kind of done with those they're temporary selection sets so I'm kind of done with those I don't care about it now I'm just caring about like the selection of the bottom jaw and I can I can continue to add to this selection. It doesn't matter. But what auto groups does is it will put anything in an island, a, a, you know, because since I hid that loop and it just kind of isolated that jaw, that jaw island, it, it put it in its own poly group when I hit auto groups. That's what I did that for. And now my ring is still pink because it's still that original poly group. So now if I hold down control plus shift and tap on a vertice, in the middle of the pink and the orange, it's going to isolate that. So I then I can put push Control W, which is make it in, make anything that's visible into its own poly group. Okay, that works with both masking and not and uh, visibility. So if I just isolate everything, hit Control W, it's going to put it in its own poly group. And now I kind of have his lower jaw, and I I probably wouldn't do it this way. I would probably continue it all the way down. So if you wanted to add, say, to this, to this jaw, let's hide it. Then, now he really looks like a zombie. Then I can come in here and hide these polygons. Okay, and then hide these, and then invert it. And it looks like I grabbed some extras here, and I can hide those and you just kind of go back and forth until you kind of get what you want like this and then I can hit control W again now that's a better jaw selection okay so does that does that make sense that's kind of how you can put things in its own poly group is like you can hide a loop use that to isolate uh, you know a, an island and then group it so like this nose I could do this nose and hit control W and then that puts it in its own poly group okay so I hope that helps hope that hope that answers your question that's kind of crazy I know okay so let's see da, da, da. um crime any sakes what a great name any idea when your summer registration for your course will be open um I'm hoping so anytime during the summer quarter, I haven't nailed down a, an exact date yet. I'm going to be out of town for a little while and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to figure out how to, uh, or what, what the date is. I, I really want to get some of the lessons updated before I open it again. So that's kind of what's, what it's hanging on. Um, oh, I can't, I can't wait for summer or cyberpunk 2077. I can't wait. 
Uh, let's see. Malchus, what are you talking about? I missed it. I was yapping. <laughs> oh, can you have a link to your brushes? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, you can use as well as the new feature draw poly group. What are you talking about, Pedro? I don't know what you're talking about. Draw poly group? Excuse me. Okay, there's new. Man, you guys are way ahead of me. Okay, I'm I'm gonna be back on the 17th of this month, and then when I when I do, um, I'll be I'll be putting together the new contest. I was so the retrogasm contest ends on the 15th. I was waiting for that to fi finish up, and then we'll we'll uh, do that. Oh, the polygroup it stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Okay, we're saving this. I'm gonna make a band around his hat really quick. I gotta I gotta keep going, even though I want to read. Read all the comments. Let's keep going on this guy. I'm never going to get him done. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to duplicate this hat. Then I'm just going to use the, the geometry that's already here. Come on. Delete hidden. There's my band. Whoa. Sorry, I'm going to concentrate for a second, you guys. Get some stuff done here. You're using my brush's default female head and needed to create a smile. Oh, yeah. Sorry, man. Yep. There's there's better ways since I since I made the course. I I need to update it for sure. Okay, so let's see, Z modeler. There we go. Hat band done. So Pedro, are you talking about the the polygroup it? Yeah, it's it's pretty fun to use. Um, I I haven't gotten very very good at it. I haven't used it very much. There, it's kind of like it's very specific case use. So it's kind of for those people that like to use kind of that rough out method where you are using say uh, the the clay buildup and and like the uh, the Damien standard brush and you're cutting in all these panels with it. You know, you're trying to cut in, like say you have their, their example that they used is a boot. So they cut in all of these panels for that boot. Then they go in and they, they use poly group it to group every single panel on its own. Then they can use those groups to then make real panels from. So it's kind of this uh, multi-step process and uh, Polygroup it is also a an external an external program or a, a plugin kind of like uh, the noise maker or fiber mesh or something like that. It, it pops it out. Yeah, it's it's really good for hard surfaces for sure. Okay, let's see where we're at on this guy. What else could we do? These bullets. These bullets. I did make some fingerless gloves today. Um, I need I could put on these knuckles okay let's do these knuckles really quick I'm gonna do kind of this lower oh did Danny Mac show a poly group of video shows how to do it He hasn't been doing those lately. Okay. I'm going to clip this off here.
Whoa. Turn off symmetry. I'm going to make it kind of this dark brown. Then split unmasked points. There we go. Whoop. I want this. There we go. That's too big. Okay, let's see. You can just hold down control and it'll uh, duplicate whatever you have. <laughs> you know, I, I got a Cintiq glove. Uh, my my buddy Matt Thorpe he swears by him, but I just can't get into it. I don't know why. I think the one I got is just too tight on my hand and it cuts off my circulation. So then my hand gets all cold. Maybe I need a the correct size one. But I haven't really had a had a problem with my hand sticking to the surface of my Cintiq. I don't know why. <laughs> So all these, all these knuckles, knuckles. I need to crease the fingertips too. Uh, let's see, kind of using, uh, using auto masking. Oh, I'm right, Moon Mix, I gotta show you some teeth. Okay. <laughs> yep, villain, finally doing the cowboy again. Okay, let's see. Is there any good book to study about stylized character modeling? Um, I I have an online course. Over if you go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, I actually teach how to do this on online. If you're interested, looks like my normals are flipped on my on my gun. But I don't know of any books that teach stylized characters. I'm gonna crease these. There we go. That's better. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put some dirt on these and rough them up and Okay. Then I need to I was actually gonna build these rings separate so they're not combined like this. Um and then build these bullets and this little belt and then these stitches. And then make some dirt down here. Just kind of going through this. <laughs> who, who, read, who reads books? I, I know, I, I learned how to do all the modeling from reading books. It's been a while. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's see. I just want to break break the this ring off of here. So Ah, that's why. Okay. Let me duplicate it first. Duplicate. I always duplicate Delete hidden. There's our ring. <laughs> right, James? We are nerds.
There you go. And then just I'm gonna shrink these down all together. Whoop. Local symmetry. Okay. That's better. And then we'll grab the color off of here. Fill it. Yeah, Pedro, James awesome, right? <laughs> you guys should check out James' work. He did this great hot rod. It's like a rat rod. It's so cool. James, I'm going to have one of those someday. Oh, I'd love to build one. It's like a... It's kind of like a piece of art into itself, you know? Did I go too far? Let's see... I'm just doing some subtle tweaks on the outside of these. <laughs> hey Manuel, over on Facebook, how are you? Thanks Brian. I don't know if you're still here or not, but love you too man, thanks. You're awesome. Oh yeah, right? <laughs> Some cartoons. Um I used to be um like back in the in the 90s. I used to do airbrush art. You guys remember airbrushing? <laughs> and uh so I'm saving this really quick. And I used to go to car shows and uh paint like airbrush car designs on t-shirts. Well, and on like cars themselves and hoods and helmets and things like that. That was a good time. <laughs> um, sometimes I use my mouse. Sometimes I use the pen. I don't know. It depends on what I'm doing. When I'm just kind of moving stuff around and, and cutting stuff and duplicating stuff, I usually use the mouse. When I'm actually doing sculpting or needing some arcs and things, I use the the pen. Okay, I need to flip the normals on this trigger. See this trigger right here? Flipping normals. I just saved it in case it crashed. Sometimes uh, flipping the normals crashes ZBrush. I hope it doesn't crash. I just saved it. So whenever you do something that you know might crash ZBrush, always save first. Yeah, Pro Pro 420, 4210, whatever, sorry, I did, I did, I used, I started as a 2D artist. Okay, display, flip, let's see if it breaks it, all right, we're good, we are good. Oops, except for I shouldn't have flipped this, this is the inside of the barrel, let's hide that and flip. Yeah, I used to go to like, um... Yeah, like I said, I used to go to car shows and stuff and paint paint cars on t-shirts and helmets and leather jackets and guitars. Like, I used to do electric guitars and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, back when it was cool. <laughs> Pro 420. <laughs> cool, man. All right. I'm going to quickly make this... Why is it doing that? Stop it. I'm going to quickly make the holster for the pistol. I totally forgot that. And it's not a circle. Yeah, James also does some classes for Nomen, you guys. He teaches at Nomen. How's that going, by the way, James? Are you still doing it? I should I should ask before I advertise for you. Because <laughs> I think he just finished one up not too long ago, right? Okay. 
Um, you guys, this is the reason I like... This is the reason I made this cylinder. This cylinder right here, it is... And I'll show you. Here, let me, let me split to unmask points. And then solo it. Okay, so this cylinder is a quad cylinder. It doesn't have a pole on the top or the bottom. And it doesn't have any subdivisions down the length of it. And the reason I made that is so I can do things exactly like when I'm creating this uh, this holster. So I can essentially make it into a cone without too much effort. Squish it this way. See, I can mask this top off and squish this down to like holster style. Wrapping up the term of hard surface modeling one and digital sculpting. Awesome. Two for my name was that Pro Four Two One O rolled off the tongue. Nice. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those, one of those names, right? You think it's all cool? It is cool, but when you, yeah, when you're reading it, just like, like you said, just like. For the first time, you don't know what it is. You're like, what? Let's make this a little bigger. Okay. It's like an ice cream cone for a gun, you know. <laughs> All right. And then it's, I'm sure it's hooked to this belt, which is hooked to this belt. So I need to figure that out. And <laughs> the thing is, is uh, this design, this design is tricky because See the coat, the, the duster here, this coat? Uh, the belt that's wrapping around his chest is actually going underneath the duster on this side. And the belt that's holding the bullets is actually also going behind and underneath his, his, uh, his duster. So I need to be careful and kind of set, set this up closer here. And then when I get it in there, I'm going to pull his duster back around so it makes more sense. So it actually clears the belt. So right now it's going to be kind of penetrating through that duster. And then later on when I go to pose him, I'll move it so it makes sense. And then this belt, it looks like it's holding the, sh the shafts up, which it probably is. But typically holsters will have another belt down that wraps around the thigh that keeps the holster from bouncing up and down when you're riding on a horse. So, I don't know, I might link that, or not, I don't know, we'll see. You guys, I kind of wish I had started this later, because after I'd started it, then ArtStation decides to do a Wild West competition, and it's too, you know, it's too late for me to enter, because I already started it. I'll have to, I'll have to ask and see if they're cool about it, but I, I doubt it. I, I bet they'll be like, yeah, no. I'm going to group this by normals. What's up everybody over on Facebook? How you guys doing? So I'm going to hide the top, hide the bottom, delete them. And now I can use my Z modeler and just add some thickness. If that's what I want to do. So I'm going to shape this uh, so the trigger can clear right here. Use clip. So I want to push these down like that. That'll probably work. I 
I just wanted kind of this this shape that will clear the trigger. And I try, James. I don't know. I don't always necessarily know what the crap I'm doing. <laughs> But I tr I try, you know. Yeah, it design the concept rules above all, but then there's sometimes when the concept doesn't make sense, and then you have to go into the realm of, well, how would this really work? You know. Then you just kind of use your educated guess. If I have an education. <laughs> Now we can, uh, let's see, extrude polygroup all, push it in. There we go. Now it decides to save. Let's pull that brown off of there. I have, I think I have 50 browns in this design too. <laughs> I like the gradients and stuff too. Yep, artistic license, right? <laughs> there we go, it's kind of dark and put some gradients on these. Good times. Okay, now we have his holster. Let's make that uh, bullet belt, that'll be fun. What time we got? 119. Got about half an hour ish. So I'm going to pull these loops up. They got pushed around slightly. And he doesn't have, uh, I know he doesn't have this, this gauntlet thing on his other hand, on his shooting hand. Or uh doesn't look like he has the the fingerless gloves either, so I'll I'll end up deleting those off that side. Does he have something on the bottom of his feet? So like what do you mean? Oh, these little guys right here? Yeah, those are from those are for the rifle that I made last uh last session. And it's hidden right now. And I don't know why though those pieces aren't hidden, but I'll hide them. So the rifle's sitting down at his feet so I can build it symmetry. Oh man, my my viewership's gonna drop. Ubisoft's going live. <laughs> oh. Okay, da, 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 da. Oh, I can probably make that strap. I'm holding it in really quick. And I don't know, can you see this back here? I don't know what this is. If it's just another one of these like satchel bags strapping around here or not i don't know what's going on <laughs> you take it off i'm gonna go watch that all right thanks for stopping by pedro take care man <laughs> see you everybody bethesda that was a good one that was a really good one with fallout and sky skyrim and excuse me that what is it called starfire something like that yeah stream exodus like crickets one person left although <laughs> ubisoft is known for cringe worthy e3 presentations so okay i'm gonna turn off symmetry we're gonna make a single bullet here and then duplicate it around Oh, nice. <laughs> Hardcore Pedro. Okay. I gotta look and see where this is connecting underneath this belt and try and uh, try and hook it up. Thanks, you guys, for sticking around. Okay, so I'm gonna use these pants to draw. Hopefully the topology brush will work for me this time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. We're 
we're just going to make this strap and it usually just kind of continues up and hooks on the back of the belt if you guys have ever seen like you know Han Solo or various cowboys <laughs> you look at their belts that's kind of how they work clean this up add some thickness boom belt thanks moon you're like you should change your name to moonbot <laughs> i appreciate it man all right group split to unmass points and this belt is about this color brown that's kind of orangish okay now we can tune it i typically don't um add thickness to when i'm doing things like this and this is the reason why is because when i go to tune it like i said before sometimes it gets messed up doesn't always uh connect or uh, like the back doesn't always follow the front when I'm moving stuff around. And it's very... So I'm actually going to... Uh, I'm going to delete everything that's not the yellow polygroup. Alright, it's being weird. Stop it. And hide everything, delete hidden. See, it's much easier to adjust just a single plane of polys than it is to adjust something with two double sides, right? Hey, James. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I, uh, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, a long time ago in a land far away not so far away just down the street <laughs> i worked at a company called sapphire and i worked on a game called uh, bionicle if you guys remember those old lego bionicles i did that, that's when i was doing some animation and i did some animation for bionicle and it was funny too because you know they're lego but they have all of these weapons like big claws and saws and all sorts of stuff but lego didn't want the game to be violent you know it's like do you guys know what you made do you know that these designs are like violent designs <laughs> you don't want them to be violent. what do you want them to do so that was that was kind of a challenge <laughs> to make a game that wasn't violent with these violent guys yeah, my old animations live on. Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, funny. That was kind of fun. That was when I was very first learning animation. When I sucked. I still kind of suck at animation. I'm not the best. <laughs> Table manners, right? It's like, what do you do with these claws? <laughs> oh, jeez. Super funny. So essentially right now I'm just making the base strap that goes underneath and then these leather bits that are actually holding the bullets on, they're going to be separate pieces. So uh, let's see if I missed any questions. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, thanks Moon Mix. I appreciate it so much. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, he's a real person. He's like my, my real spam bot. <laughs> uh, oh, I, so let's see. Salty Cookies 91. How's it going, man? Thanks for joining me on the stream. Uh, wanted to ask you, what's your motivation for making stylized characters and why not realistic? That's a fantastic question. Um, the reason why is because I'm a huge fan of design. I, I, was, uh, I was a graphic designer before I was a 3D modeler. I also worked in the sign industry. So just graphics in general and, and just really clean design work. And uh, I've always just been into like just stylized film, stylized games and collectibles, you know, just everything that is really clean and, and just has, you know, you just kind of end up looking at it for a long time because you're just like, wow, look at, look at how this flows into this. And this is, 
you know it it's just when something is done very very well stylistically i i just love it it's just seems i don't know it's uh you know it's kind of asking me why i like why i like uh 80s music instead of country or something like that you know what i mean it's i it's just something i i gravitate towards and i also find it a big challenge for me i've done a couple realistic uh characters in the past and it's fun i like it because that is a that is a skill all into itself right it's um the you know just trying to mimic reality and trying to come as close to realism as possible is is its own challenge right but trying to take somebody's hand-drawn 2d design that is already a fantastic design and trying to copy that and and make it look as good in 3d as you can it's just it's uh i love the challenge of it it just it's it's what keeps me going so that's that's uh that's why So you say a compromise? I don't say it was. A, it would be a compromise. Compromise means you're leaving something out. I, I would think. I, w- I don't think I'd use the word compromise, but um, I would. It's just okay. For, there's an example of. I used to work at Acclaim, this company called Acclaim, and they they did this uh, wrestling game, and they were working on this. It was like the wrestlers of the '80s, you know. And uh, they 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 did their own take on stylized characters, and I I don't know if that's a good example, but I really wanted to push them into a direction that is just because wrestling in itself, you know, the the real kind of wrestling, you know, like with Hulk Hogan and that, um, the they they are stylized in into themselves. Their personalities are stylized. They just everything about it is just over the top and crazy. So I I just wanted to push those designs so much and I just I never got the opportunity to do it, but um man, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's super cool. I love stylized stuff. I don't know why. <laughs> I just do. <laughs> hey Sergi, thanks for stopping by. I I appreciate it. Yes, Andrew, thank you. Yep. And if you if you are interested in ZBrush and you want to try it out, there's a trial down below that you can grab. And uh, there are streamers on this channel all week long. Er, you know, every day I think there is a someone streaming on this channel, and they're all uh, professionals, like more professional than me. <laughs> but there's a lot of them that do stylize, like my my buddy uh, Brendan. Um, and I always say his last name wrong, Brendan ben- Bensington, but I don't think that's how you say his last name. Anyway, he was on, uh, he, he, he usually streams in the mornings, but he does some fantastic realistic stuff. So if you're into realism and you want to catch, catch it, you can check it out. Um, I just realized his legs are short. <laughs> I, need to, I need to lengthen his legs. Look at that. He's like, he's like the short, look at those stumpy legs. Okay, I need to make him, I need to make him taller. I, I get these squirrel moments like this all the time. I have to apologize. Like, ooh, I just see I just seen something. It's like a puzzle. That's another thing about stylized. It's a it's a puzzle. It's like, um, wh- you know, I wanna I wanna undo the the puzzle. It's like a Rubik's cube. Oh, I just found something. Oh, there's something else, and you're just kind of uh, working through it. So, oh, thanks, Grandi Pilaf. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much. Thanks, Leo Bardo. This character is actually designed by Johannes Helgeson. So if you're interested in that. Brendan Isaiah Bankston. There you go. Bankston. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, with, I mean, with some texture work, I think you could put him in, you know, if I got his textures to this level. You could put him in a game like that. Okay. Um... Let's see. I'm, I'll, I'll probably stretch his legs out later. I just noticed they're really squatty. Uh, I could do it one of two ways. I could either use the, the T-Pose Mesh, T-Pose Master to stretch his legs out, or I could use the new, uh, this, this Transpose All Selected Subtools thing and hide everything except for the legs and stretch them out. Uh, that might be what I do. Yeah, Michael Pav- Pavlovich, I love his stuff. 
And he, t- <laughs> he talks like a Micro Machines commercial. That guy, I love him though. He's so good. Oh yeah, Salty. It's, yeah, it's just whatever you like to do the most, I guess. I, I don't... You know, you gotta you gotta look deep inside. <laughs> oh, thanks, Moon Mix. <laughs> so fast. Okay, let's let's get back to making these bullets. Bullet time. All right. So now we have the single sided uh, single sided mesh, right? We're gonna add thickness now. See how it's much easier to edit the single sided and then add thickness? And I can just extrude it inwards. But you need to be careful when you have double sided turned on because every time you extrude inwards, it's going to flip the normals. So you're going to want to go back down here to uh, display properties and flip them back. Flip. There we go. Now uh, I can hit D. And you can see how these edges are rounded. We need to straighten those guys up. So let's go crease the crease the corners. Just grab that. Tap. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now let's draw some bullets on there. Um use the cylinder. Oh, hey, Alex. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Nice to meet you too, man. <laughs> the only disadvantage of single-sided geo is the outer edge acts differently than with double-sided geo. Yeah, for sure. I mean, th that's you, you kind of have to do that after. So if you're going to do any edge work, to the you know to the edge of the double sided uh, piece of geometry. Just do that later. So you know get get the entire piece of geometry the way you want. Like say you're doing a cape or something like that. Capes are typically a nightmare to get into place. Um, but when you get it into place and it's all flowing nicely, then you can add the thickness. Then I will actually typically add the uh, thick to thin after that. So normally I would not keep the edge you know, exactly the same width all the way down and all the way across. So I'll go through and I'll edit it to make, make the edges have, you know, like they usually get thin when they're connected up by the neck and then they get thicker as they bellow out and then they get thin again on the edges. Um, especially for print, if you're going to do some printing, you want to do that. Um, and then if you have like any kind of edge work on your panels or whatever, you just do it after the fact. So it's kind of a step-by-step -step process, right? You you make the single-sided geometry first, add the thickness, edit your sides, and then you're good to go. Okay, so I'm going to turn this upwards and solo it. Let's split it off. Subtool number 101. Let's see how many subtools we have. 64 so far. 64 sub tools. All right. Um, for this tip, I'm trying to think of what I want to do. And I actually want to, I want to make this a little more realistic than the bullets you see there. I'm just going to add a little uh, end. And to do that, I'm going to cut it in with a Z modeler. Insert. Did I inset? Insert. Those words are too similar. I have to do it with dynamic turned off. Otherwise it gets too close. So something like this. And I'm going to extrude poly loop. So extrude poly loop, I explained this last time, but you can see that little orange, that little orange line as I flip around this face. That is pointing me the direction of the poly loop. So I can just grab it and pull it out like this without needing to go in and like, um, you know, make this a new poly group and then say extrude poly group. It's just kind of a shortcut, so you don't have to do that. Okay. Then for the top, for the bullet part, I'm going to grab this insert multi mesh again. 
I'm gonna grab a sphere. Ah, this might be a little too high resolution. Let's do this one. Okay. And increase it so this width is about like this. <laughs> These bullets remind me of uh so and James knows this. I used to be <laughs> I used to be in the military, I used to be in the Navy. And um it's weird because I wasn't in I was never on a boat. I was what what's called a CB and Steve CB stands for construction battalion. So we should have been Marines. I don't know why we're, they were Navy, but, um, you had to, <laughs> dude, it does look like a 40 mic. <laughs> yeah. I like those little ones, those little, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I had the chance to go out to, uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, like by NORAD and stuff like that. Whoops. I'm just straightening out this line here. And um, we got to uh, qualify on, I'm, I th I'm thinking they're called 405s, 405s, 402s, something like that. They're, anyway, they are, they're grenade launchers that, that hook onto the bottom of M16. Let's see. I'm trying to remember the name of them. Okay. There we go. So, so yeah, so here's one. See see this grenade launcher that's on the bottom here? Uh, see the grenade? There we go. You can kind of see the grenade right here. It reminds me of of these bullets, how big they are, because they they fit into this gigantic gun that shoots dinosaurs, right? And <laughs> yeah, they're just anyway. It was it was very interesting to to uh, to shoot those things because they're the grenades are about that long, they're about that big around, and when you shoot them, they tumble through the air instead of like instead of shoot, they like go boom 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 and, and spin. And they gave us um, they gave us some practice rounds that were uh, they had like this really bright orange powder in them, so you could see where they hit. And they had a metal wall out there with a window in it, and you tr you would try and like launch the grenade through that window. And uh, yeah, that was pretty interesting. Good times. <laughs> Colorado Springs. So I'm going to kind of make, make this bullet look like that a little bit. Oh. Thanks, Rakan. I didn't, sorry, I don't, I don't look over in Facebook often enough. I need to more. Insert this and this one. Transpose edge loop complete. I don't know why. There we go. There. I think that might look more like a bullet. I'm going to use, oops, I'm going to use a, uh, a support loop for this top one instead of creasing it because I want to kind of have it cur curve around. Oh, you do? You live in you live in Colorado Springs? Right on. <laughs> That's cool. Small world, right? Yeah, there's a there's a there's a base in Colorado Springs that I I was on. Insert this edge loop too. I also got sent out there to, to paint a sign. <laughs> like I was telling you guys, I was in the sign industry for a while. Hey, what's up? How you doing? 
Hyperion, how's it going? Okay, so let me, let me show you guys something here. Photos. Okay, so here, there you go. There's a picture of me with the sign that I painted. Oh, I can't zoom in. Anyway, I painted this sign. This is me when I was about 20 <laughs> out in Colorado Springs. And they, yeah, I just, I hand painted that sign for them. That was fun. All right. Let's get this, let's get this bullet going. You drive by that base all the time? <laughs> right on. Yeah, it was kind of up on, up on the hill next to the, I, won't, I don't want to call them the cliffs, but it's so weird out there because the mountain range just ends and then it's just plains from then on. It's so bizarre. The Rockies, the Rocky Mountains, they just... They, they end in Colorado Springs. They just, you know, like I'm in Utah right now. I'm in the Rocky Mountains, like in the middle of them. But they just end. And then it just goes, punk, and then flat. <laughs> it's the most craziest thing. Okay. I need to make these more like brass than like, let's see. Maybe I'll fill it with a material or something for now. I don't know. Just playing around. <laughs> yeah, continental plates. It's right where they, right where they collide. It's so crazy to to witness in person, just to see it, because it's so gigantic. You know, it's just like enormous. Because it's mountains, right? It's like full on mountains to to plains. Oh, really? This is nothing? <laughs> oh, you're using uh, ZBrush Core? Um, that is a good question, and I, I'm not sure I know the answer because I don't know if you can save brushes out of ZBrush Core. Um, typically, like, with all of my brushes down here on the bottom, essentially what I've done is I open a brush that I like, like, say, Inflate, and then you just change the parameters under brush right here. You can just, or you change it right here under, uh, you know, Z intensity, something like that. And then you just go brush, save as right here and just save it as your own and then load it in as your own. So yeah, you just have to save it as your new brush. And that's, that's what I've done. That's why I have all of these down here. Cause these are, these are the settings that I personally like. So uh, then I save them and load them in my, into my user interface. But I don't, I don't know if you can save your own brushes inside of ZBrush Core. It's a good question, though. Let me know if you can. For the next person that asks. <laughs> oh, yeah, Moon Mix. Okay, I'm going to do it right now. Let's do it right now. Okay, so when you say teeth, what kind of teeth are you looking for? Like individual teeth or just kind of like... Uh, you know, like a tooth guard teeth. What are you looking for? Let me save this, by the way. And we'll go put them in that mouth I made. <coughs> Excuse me. You can? Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay. So let's go. Let's go over to the mouth. There's the mouth. Ye it's, it's yellow now. Let's set it to like a... Darker skin tone. There we go. Okay. Um, you can fill this. This is a mouth I watched earlier. If you guys missed it, you can go back in the stream when they post it on uh, on, on YouTube and, and check out how I made this mouth. Um, and it's not, it's not the best mouth on the planet, but it's fast. Okay. So uh, there's a couple ways that I make teeth. Um, the easiest way is with 
a, a cylinder. So if you grab this insert multi mesh and grab the cylinder, I'm going to switch to the top here. I'm just going to draw it out like this. Then um, I'm going to split it. So I'll split unmasked points, which will, which will put it in its own uh, its own subtool right here. And let's let's go ahead and make it kind of lighter color. Okay, and then all you have to do is shrink it down like this. And there's kind of your uh, the, the 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 hockey puck style starting of okay but now what we can do is delete everything you don't want delete everything that's not teeth <laughs> so i know that's dumb to say but oh come on we don't need clip we need we need select lasso and we're going to go like this and like this let's turn on double sided so we can see what we're working with okay and then we're going to go delete hidden okay and then we can kind of put these down in here and turn on transparency to see where they sit in the mouth. They usually sit like the split is right at your uh, right at your mouth split, you know. So something like this. Then we can make it narrower like this. Then we can grab these back these back two points it's hard to see but we're going to drag them out to make them straight then all you do is use the uh, z modeler and extrude them inwards like this and that is how you essentially do uh, just basic of all basic stylized teeth and what you can do too is go on the bottom and then make them thick where the molars are and then start to make them thinner as they as they start to come towards the front so there's your front teeth right so they get thin and then they get thicker as they go back so there's your molars and then sometimes what i like what i like to do is uh make them taper like this as they're kind of going up if they don't have gums you know if uh, they're just like super basic Muppet teeth, not that Muppets have teeth, but you know, just, just the white band is all we're looking for. Okay. Is just, and you can kind of bring them in like this too, like taper, taper them in like a kind of anime style, which is like, you know, like the tops will go like this and the bottom teeth will kind of go in like that. Then after you get that, all you have to do is, um, let's center this and uh, duplicate it, holding down control, turn off symmetry, spin it around like this. And then I kind of overlap the front teeth just a little bit and you can shrink them anyway something like that then you can make sure that they're symmetrical by doing a mirror and weld there you go you can hit dynamic and sometimes i'll get rid of this crease and i'll put one more loop down the center here let's do auto groups so these are in two different groups then you can mask the top ones out and move it away. Uh, what I mean by that is, um, and you can make sure that you're finished with the upper teeth before you do the lower teeth. But what I mean is you can get into this Z modeler and you can insert a, a mesh or another loop like this. But if you turn up the Z intensity to like a 14 or something, when you click on it, oh, I want it backwards. Okay, never mind. I, these must be flipped. Are they flipped? Yeah, they're flipped. Okay. So see how the, the normal maps are flipped? Let's flip them back because the how I knew that is when I when I turn up the Z intensity and I clicked on here with the insert insert edge loop, see how it went up inside and it made it concave? I actually want it to be convex. I want it to go out. So I'm gonna undo that 
and we're going to go down to display and just hit flip. You can turn off double to check it. There we go. We don't need double on anymore anyway. Okay, so now if we insert edge loop, it's going to make them come out. See that? So now it's convex instead of concave. And that'll just kind of give it that little edge, you know, that little that little rounded edge. You can also uncrease it now if you wanted to. Um, then sometimes it's kind of fun to, like if you want to split the center, you could do that. If you want to kind of uh, differentiate the front teeth from the rest, you could grab this, um, let's do single poly, extrude single poly. You could do this. Well, let's uh, mirror it. Okay, not that. <laughs> anyway, you could grab these four and just kind of pull them down. So it kind of goes, there's a flat edge and then it kind of goes down for the front teeth here. You know, you could do that. Um, and if you wanted to do like actual teeth, like separated teeth, what I usually do is I create the gums first. Um, here, I'll show you really quick. And I hope you guys don't mind that I'm showing them this. I hope you guys... Uh, in want to know this stuff as well. So, um, okay, so I, I, I do the same thing. To start with the gums, I'll do something just like this. But what I'll do is I'll actually insert an edge wherever I want the gums to go up. Let's turn off my intensity. And we will insert an edge like this, like every so often, let's turn off subdivisions here then I'll just go back and on every single one of these here let's shorten this whole thing up to be more like gums it looks like okay <laughs> ah, funny Pedro like a cigar like through his teeth <laughs> oh man I didn't mean to do that. Let's see. I need to center this. Let's fix it. I'm basically trying to... Uh, let's do a mirror and weld. I messed it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so... <laughs> you know, I, I start with this a little better. It's not all jacked up like this. Let's turn on symmetry. Okay. Um... Now what I'll do is I'll just go through and basically create the gum pockets. You know what I mean? Like every other every other one, I'll make a a spot where a tooth will go. And I'm go I'm doing this really fast. I'd take more time and do it, but I'm doing this super fast, just so you can understand. Then you can kind of go through here and squish these together and pull them apart. So where the tooth goes. You're actually going to try and make a socket, you know. And then you can also bevel these edges. When I say bevel, I'll show you in a minute. Mm. Let's spread this out. You're kind of making a socket, and then it goes back together between the teeth. Spreads back apart where the tooth is. And where the molars are, it doesn't quite pinch back together as much as it, as it does in the front teeth. Anyway, you can kind of do that. And, uh, and notice how this, this is pretty extreme in the low poly, but as soon as I turn on dynamic subdivision, it smooths it all out, right? So um, basically, I, I can get rid of these creases. So let's go uncrease all like this. And it's gonna really make them soft, right? Okay, but now I want to define the gums in between the teeth a little more. So when I said bevel, what I can do is I hold, hover over an edge and I go bevel. And then I say edge loop complete because I want it to go all the way around. And then I just kind of go through here and split these apart between the teeth like this. So then when I turn on dynamic, it's a little bit more defined through the between the teeth like that. Okay, and now what I can do is I can essentially just start making teeth and I just use my insert multi mesh brush, either the appendage brush, but I, I typically will use a sphere, um, maybe this low resolution one. 
and then you can just pick pick a pick a socket you know <laughs> and stick it in there and then just use this uh, gizmo to start shaping it and then you can use the move brush to finish it off so and you'll you want to pay attention to actually how many teeth you you need to have or how many you want and you know if you want to do them realistically you need to count them and make sure you have all the sockets in place that you need but essentially I will just make them like teeth you know and then I'll I'll kind of arc them inwards when I'm like you know how the just the the band of teeth that I made before how they kind of looked I will mimic that while I'll make them thick on the inside so they're kind of fat where they connect with the gums and then they get really thin as they go out so I guess these would be like what are they called incisors like the the ones that are more pointy so you can go like that you know it just depends on what what kind of design they are and then you can move them around stick them in there and then when you have them you can just hold down control and duplicate it and stick it in the next spot and uh, I'm gonna have to make these a lot bigger obviously so they actually go into each other um yeah it's they are completely dependent on which way the normals are facing that's 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 the only way I know of explaining the best way to put them in there let me uh, put that in its own polygroup um, so map map 04 uh, what's the advantage of ZBrush over other software um, <laughs> you guys uh, it's it's a digital sculpting program where most other programs are not most other programs are animation software with modeling capabilities but ZBrush is kind of a it's a digital sculpting program if you can think of it like that so usually companies will use ZBrush to build their high resolution models with and then um, then they'll take them into other software to finish them up and get them into the into either the movie or the game or whatever okay anyway I'm not doing the best at these teeth but you can kind of get the idea of like <laughs> This, this, this guy is missing his two front teeth. <laughs> He's like, how are you doing? It whistles. Anyway, and I, I'm missing a couple teeth in there, like the incisors and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's essentially how I make the teeth. You know, just kind of fill them out and then do the bottom teeth just the same. Just use reference. Make sure you have the proper number and all that kind of stuff. So, yep, it's for holding the cigar. <laughs> What's up, Chase? Hey, you're still around. Most game devs use Blender? Uh, yes, you're wrong. I don't know a single game developer that's uh, that's not an independent studio that can't afford like Maya or Max. Uh, yeah, most game studios use Maya or Max, and that could be changing in the future because you know with with uh, Blender and Eevee and all that stuff coming out, but. Um, yeah, but ZBrush is like the go-to program if you're wanting to do digital digital sculpting. I know, I know, uh, you know, other software has sculpting capabilities, but nothing like nothing like ZBrush. So, I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with Blender at all. I, I, there's there's some uh, it's got some some really cool tools. The, the cycles render is great. I can't wait for EV. But uh yep. Sculpt 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 sculpting? No, sculpting. Like sculpt, like digital like clay, like you're using clay and you're sculpting clay like a sculptor. Yeah. It's like that. Oh yeah, the grease pencil is pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Yep, Pedro speaks the truth. Yes, yeah, sculpting. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Okay, um, 
Du, du, du. Yeah, it is. I have to pay for it. It's not fun. Oh, you guys be nice. <laughs> be nice. Okay, let's see. Um, duplicate. I'm going to try and make these leather bands. Let's see. Delete hidden. Double sided. I'm just going to try and bridge these together. then in the Z modeler it does have this bridge thing where you can select two edges and do a bridge go click click Yes, Pixelogic makes ZBrush, and you are watching Pixelogic ZBrush stream right now. So this this Twitch channel does belong to uh, Pixelogic, the makers of ZBrush. So that's why I do do not like to talk about other software too much when I'm streaming here. But you know, uh, ZBrush works with a lot of other software, so. I use ZBrush in conjunction with, like, say, Maya or Max, stuff like that. So, oh, what's up, plans? You, you, you showed up uh, just in time for me to wrap it up. <laughs> Good to see you, though. Haven't seen you for a while. No worries, Matt. No worries. Welcome to the stream anyway. Okay, so I want to... I'm going to slide these edges down, I think. Something like this. Okay. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up for the day. For who am I making this model? For myself, actually. So this is, so the original designer, his name is Johannes Helgeson. He did the concept. And uh, yeah, I'm just making it for myself. Um, and what I do is I just, I just like to demo how I create characters while I'm streaming. And I, uh, I used to work on, I used to work at Disney Interactive on a game called Disney Infinity. And uh, I've been in the industry for, in the game industry for about 19 years so far. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm working for other studios now. I'm, I haven't announced who yet. I don't think so. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Jace. And then I like to 3D print these things out when I'm done. And uh, yeah, so I hope eventually I'll pose him and he, he rides a dinosaur. So this guy rides a dinosaur instead of a horse. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really fun. I can't wait to get him printed out. So yeah, thanks everybody. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out. Um, oh, you did, Matt? Yep. Yeah, I was, uh, I was the lead character designer, or not designer, lead character modeler for uh, a, a time when I was there. Um, I guess I should say senior modeler. And, uh, yeah, so this is, I'm, I'm, uh, streaming every week on Mondays at 11 AM Pacific standard time. So if you guys want to catch me next week, I should be here next week. Um, 
And I also have an online course where I teach how to do this stuff. And it's called 3D Character Workshop. You can see it right above my head here and right all the way up at the top of the screen, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And you can sign up for my newsletter and you will get all of my brushes and my user interface and everything for free if you'd like to sign up for that. Um, and uh, if you want to try out ZBrush, there's a trial below. And I think it's a 45-day trial. I'm not sure. I, I, can't, re I can't recall. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for dropping by. It was, it's been fun. Um, this guy's finally coming together, I think. I'm gonna do some more work on him. <laughs> Let me see if I can unhide everything so you can see the dinosaur. There we go. So this is, this is the dinosaur. He kind of looks like a dragon. Let me change it to like a white. There you go. He's, he's got these little nubby fingers right now. Soon he'll have, he'll have full fingers, but right now he's got nubs. <laughs> Anyway, here's his, uh, he's got a, this, this rifle and yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I should turn on live Boolean so those will go away. There's his rifle. Anyway, fantastic. Uh, thanks everybody. And, uh, we will catch you next week. And until then, happy sculpting. Take care. See ya.